He turned his head to the side, and I knew my beautiful, happy, innocent baby boy was about to die in my arms. Just twelve hours ago, we were laughing, making silly faces, enjoying a beautiful road trip, and I was so proud because I was taking my son, my one miracle, on a fairy tale winter weekend to the mountains. A trip that I had promised to take him for so long, something he wanted from the bottom of his tiny, sweet, and lovely heart. A journey where I wanted to teach him how to ski and sled and make snowmen. A fairy tale weekend that turned into a nightmare in the blink of an eye. Because of me. Nothing in my life could have ever prepared me for that night. There was so much snow and the blizzard was so intense I couldn't see three feet in front of me. But the cockiness of the role model hero father in me pushed me to drive further up the mountain instead of turning back. And back then, I was lying to myself that I didn't want to disappoint the little guy. But now I know, it was just my manly pride that was driving me. Drive the car. We started off early in the morning, under the shiny winter sun. Two happy boys enjoying their first trip alone. A trip I thought would bring us closer to each other. A trip where I could really show my son how cool his daddy really is. We started making jokes about who'll slide down the slope faster. I'd say I'll win. And Joss was jumping up and down saying, no, I'll win. Then we decided we'll both cross our imaginative finish line together. But who would build the biggest snowman? I would. No, Josh would. And so our day passed, stopping at gas stations for snacks and laughing all the way into the night. As we started going up the mountain, the weather changed, but I couldn't see it. I was blinded by the joy and happiness and pride of taking my little guy, hopefully one day my reflection, on his first trip to the mountains. We were about to sleep in an actual lodge, a wooden cabin. How cool was that for two city boys? It was around 7 p.m. when the first snowflakes started melting off the windshield. But that was nothing. We were actually happy. Not only were we going to be in a lodge, but we would also have snow adding to the awesomeness of our trip. We were unstoppable. Yes, Daddy was unstoppable. Daddy was the greatest. But Daddy was not prepared for the white hell that was about to be unleashed upon us. It only took 20 minutes for those beautiful, heavy, mushy snowflakes to turn into a full-blown blizzard of the likes I had never seen before. But we were still safe in our car, and even though I couldn't see three feet in front of me, in my mind I could still see the road, and I knew we were getting close. So I just said to myself, Ryan, you can do this, don't let him down, and I pushed on. I looked back at Josh and asked him if he's tired. He said, I'm okay, Daddy. I love you. And I remember feeling so good for a second. Something that reminded me of a roller coaster ride. Then everything went dark. I could hear someone crying in the distance. It took me a few seconds to understand that it was Josh who was crying. He looked like he was upside down. But why? That just didn't make any sense. Why would he be upside down? And why was everything so cold? Then I realized... I was hanging half out the windshield. My head was killing me. I felt something warm running down my face. A metallic smell. It was blood. Josh was still strapped in his seat, hanging upside down, scared to death. We'd crashed. Our car had flipped on the roof. One bend, one moment of distraction, one breath, and my whole life changed. I tried calming Josh first. Daddy's here. Everything is okay. We are safe. Nothing bad happened. We're going to be all right. I crawled and freed him from his seatbelt and dragged him out. It was pitch black. I could barely make sense of what was going on around me. I wiped my face, looked around stunned, and I started to understand the gravity of the situation. We had just barely survived a crash in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night, halfway up the mountain, in a full-blown blizzard. I was severely hurt. Josh was in shock, shivering, and his beautiful face was half-covered in blood. It was bad, but what followed crushed my soul. I held him in my arms to try and calm him down, and the only words he would say were, Daddy, it hurts. I love you. Please make the pain go away. Daddy, it hurts. Please make it stop. I felt helpless and lost. Call for help. I have to call for help. I checked my pockets. I checked inside the car and in the glove compartment, and I couldn't find my phone. It was probably under three feet of snow in the ditch in front of us, or it might have been under the car or above it. I searched for it desperately for what felt like half an hour, but I never found it. I started weighing my options, either stay in the car and wait or try to find the cabin and call for help from there. I couldn't risk staying in the car. I had no idea the extent of the wounds Josh and I had, but I could stand up and I could walk, so I just wrapped Josh in a blanket and started going up the road. I remembered the GPS showing me only a few miles to our destination. I couldn't remember exactly how many, but it kind of felt like a one-digit number. So I started walking with my baby boy in my arms, hoping for a car or for a snowplow or anything that might help us to show up. But nothing did. 
I dragged my feet for what felt like miles, and at that point I wasn't sure if we were still on the road anymore. I could barely see anything through the darkness, a flicker here and there. I was desperately lost. But I kept Josh talking, telling him this would be an adventure to remember. But in my heart, doubt had started to dwell. Doubt that we'd make it through the night. After a while, I was so cold I couldn't feel my arms and I couldn't feel my legs. It felt like I was walking on wooden stilts. Then I realized that Josh hadn't said a word for some time. I shook him and called him. I even yelled at him. But he just turned his head to the side in silence, and I knew right then and there that my beautiful, happy, innocent baby boy was about to die in my arms. I grew desperate. I started crying. I began to yell and shout and scream for help as hard and as loud as I could. But the snow was muffling down all my desperate cries. There was nothing more I could do but run, run uphill, hoping to reach the cabin we'd rented. And I ran until my legs gave in and I fell to my knees. Josh had closed his eyes and he wasn't moving. I started crying because I felt I was about to give up. I just couldn't go any further. As I was lying on my knees, defeated, something I thought was out of this world happened. I felt a smell, a familiar and lovely smell, a scent so crisp through the running snow that I will never forget. It was the smell of civilization, the smell of burning wood. I don't know if you've ever had an epiphany, if you've ever felt blessed, relieved, or ever realized you were going to live, although you were just about to give up and die. It's overwhelming and overpowering and filled with adrenaline. I started crying and running, yelling at Josh to hold on and yelling at myself to push forward, because moments after, that crisp smell turned into a dim light. It was still far, but it was growing bigger. That meant we were getting closer. And we did. It was a cabin. I literally crawled to the front door holding my boy and with my last ounce of strength knocked as hard as I could. The door opened and I'll never forget what I saw and how I felt. The beauty of mankind, the feeling of being rescued, the warmth and the smell of salvation. Help us, please. I don't want to lose him. The family helped us inside, sat Josh by the fire, changed his clothes and covered him in blankets. He still wasn't moving. His small, delicate hands were cold and his fingers almost blue. He was barely breathing. They tried calling an ambulance, but no one had any reception. The blizzard must have taken down the towers. So we kept Josh as warm as possible, talked to him, and prayed that he'd regain consciousness. I prayed that God would take me instead. It felt like hours passing by. Time stood still. I was keeping my head near his, asking him to wake up, telling him how much I love him and how many things we still had on our weekend list. Beating me at downhill sledding, making the biggest snowman, skiing faster, further, winning at everything. And he did. He won the most important game of all, the game of life. He woke up. His voice was faint. He was weakened and tired, but he was hungry, thirsty, smiling and alive. He ate, drank a glass of water and fell asleep peacefully in my arms. That was the second time I felt it that night, that overwhelming feeling of pure joy, happiness and gratitude. We were both alive, safe and well. And we had God to thank for that, for guiding my frozen steps to that wonderful family in their cabin. When I woke up in the morning, Josh was already running around with Stan's little ones. It is to this day one of the most peaceful mornings I have ever had. The blizzard had stopped and felt like the sun was about to show up from behind the clouds. The kids started watching a DVD on his living room TV. It was probably the kind of morning I wanted to have on that trip. But the journey there, that should have been different. I was still filled with regret and thinking about how I almost lost Josh. I just couldn't get over it. I finally got to thank Stan from the bottom of my heart. We would be dead in a ditch under four feet of snow if it wasn't for his cozy cabin, delicious smoke, and beautiful porch lights. So we started talking, explaining to him how I got in that situation, and all of a sudden I felt my knees weak. I pushed his window drape to the side, rubbed my eyes in disbelief, and pointed out, I see dozens of cabins and lodges down the road from where I came. Are those deserted? No, he told me. There are people that live here all year round. But I didn't see those last night. I know I was pretty banged up when I started walking away from my car carrying Josh, I'm 100% sure that if I had seen any signs of life, of any kind, I would have stopped further down. The only cabin I saw was yours. How? Why? Why is that? He had a confident but disappointed look on his face. Yes, Ryan, you're not the first one to bang on my door in the middle of the night during a storm or blizzard. I get that at least twice a year, and it's not just tourists. Sometimes I have to shelter my neighbors, too. Why and how I get that? Well, it's easy, and in the same time, hard. But mostly it's because my old man never left anything to chance. Come on, put your jacket on. I'll show you. He took me outside to his shed, opened an old squeaky door and pointed at something in the dark. 
I couldn't see much, to be honest. Six dusty toolboxes and a ping-pong table. What did you want to show me? I don't see anything. Give it a couple seconds and look closer. That's when I saw lights flickering inside one of the dusty toolboxes. I opened it and it all made sense. We were the only ones that had power. Those old dusty toolboxes were the very thing that saved us, keeping on the lights I saw the night before, a secret power bank. Each and every toolbox was a power source on its own. Three were depleted, three were still kicking at 80%. I took a closer look at the ping pong table, and to my amazement it wasn't a table, but a folding array of solar panels, small and compact like nothing I've seen before. I looked back at Stan, smiling. It's amazing. Yes, it is. I didn't make it. My old man did. God rest his soul. He passed away two years ago. This was his biggest project. He never liked depending on the grid, the government, and all of that. Grid, running water, basically anything you can pay a bill for, it's all comfortable. But he never took those for granted. He knew that any of them could fail at any time. The national grid is old, vulnerable, and crippled. A dusk of wind could leave him in the dark for weeks. And when that fails, everything around it stops. Running water, cable, phones. And don't even get me started on the government and its response time. Now, I'm not new to electric circuits, but I have a small auto shop and I've seen my fair share of wires and batteries. But I must have stayed four hours in the shed trying to figure out how two small panels could have changed the whole bank. And how three batteries of that size could have powered an entire cabin for 16 hours straight. Anyway, I had enough time to study the contraption, because snowplows were nowhere in sight. We still had power through the second night, although Stan had to talk the kids out of using the big screen TV, not knowing if we were going to spend a third one up there. Help only came the next day, with the usual hassle, like the Gov was doing us a favor, after waiting for 48 hours. What if we wouldn't have had electricity, or food, or supplies, or even worse, and I wouldn't have found Stan's cabin? Me and my son would still be stranded in the car, in the middle of nowhere, or even worse. Who would have helped us then? No one. And that's the thing Stan's father, in all his years, understood best. You have to be prepared first, able to help yourself and those around you, because sitting and waiting for miracles from FEMA will get you killed. I asked Stan if he had any plans or blueprints left behind by his old man, because I was intrigued. How his system got us through almost three days of dead cold winter and blizzards. It was incredible. I thought about what a system like this would mean for us back home. I wouldn't have to worry about the next storm shoving us in the dark again. He was a bit skeptical, but he gave me an old worn-out notebook. Sure, Ryan, knock yourself out. Maybe you'll understand what he did back there. I've been trying for two years now. You can keep it. I took his notes with me and studied the plans for his solar panel system. Somehow, it produced way more AC than you'd expect for that size. But what I finally discovered was that the secret laid in storage and charging times. He tweaked it until it was giving out almost twice as much power at only half the charge time. And that there was the lifesaver. Everybody can get solar panels up in the house or in their yard. But how long does a single charge last? How much would a normal system cost? Not to mention maintenance, snow, and all the space they take. Or even worse, putting your health at risk by hanging them on the house and climbing up there to clean them. It's a nightmare when winter comes, high winds, or when a sudden hailstorm hits. That's where Stan's dad changed the rules of the game. It took me almost a year to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. I built a system for my house in the city. I only have 1,500 square feet and never would have dreamed of going solar. But using his amazing plans, I got it going on just 20 square feet. And whenever I need the extra space, I just fold the panels and put them in the garage. No worries, no maintenance, no headaches. It cost me a little over $200, $204.68 to be more precise, to build the very first unit, and results came pounding hard the very next day. The meter was barely moving, and it reflected directly into the bill, 68% off in the first month. I did my best to cut even more, but on the scale I built it just wasn't possible. As I said, this is not a BS conspiracy cloak device, there are limits. Anyway, I think I did pretty good, and the cost of $200, that's money well spent. I got it back in three months just by cutting off the bill, and I'm $1,369.30 on profit now. Now let me tell you what it's all about and how it can change your life. This ingenious solution can work anywhere to power everything from small radios to big refrigerators, big screen TVs, computers, or even houses. It's perfect to use in any situation, especially in disaster situations when all the energy lines are down and you need electricity for cooking and preserving the food in refrigerator. It won't take half the yard to assemble, only a couple of square feet, and you can just fold the panels and put them in the garage whenever you want. But it's so powerful that it can reduce your entire electricity bill by 68% instantly, even if now you're paying $250 a month. 
and you can find parts for it anywhere at any local shop or online. Not only that, but the batteries don't have to be new. Stan's father didn't pay hundreds of dollars for them. New isn't always the best option. He bought six used batteries from a garage sale for mere pennies and used those instead. There's a catch. DIY guides for solar panels are all over the internet. But if you follow those instructions, you're looking at $2,000 minimum investment, and that's a lot of money. But no one will teach you how to make this work for under $200, not because they don't want to, but because they just don't know. But all that was until Stan's old man came up with a way. He got his idea from the most common battery we all use, one that I've been dealing with in my shop my entire life, and lasts five to eight years and is recharged thousands of times, no matter how cold or hot it gets outside. The car battery. It's simple. You can find used ones everywhere. In fact, you may have a couple yourself laying around the garage. It has easy maintenance, revives after total drain, and has enough amps to weld iron. And with a well-tuned charge controller, it will never let you down. Two or three of these babies can boost any electricity source into five times more, instantly, permanently, and apart from taking the panels out once in a while to charge them, they won't need any intervention for a minimum of five years. That means that if you gain 68% more electricity, you'll pay only 32% of how much you're paying today. The good news is that there's no danger whatsoever behind this system. Anyone can have their own money-saving device properly installed in less than four hours, and it will cut your electricity bill by 68% or more starting today. This ingenious system can be built for less than $200, and as I said, most of the components can be bought at any local shop, garage, or online. And if you're going to follow the videos that I prepared for you that show you exactly how to build this amazing device, even your kid can build one by the end of the day. I know my little Josh did. And you don't have to be an electrician. Heck, you don't even need energy knowledge. There's a catch here, too. Everything that you're about to learn today about building your own device is dumb simple, but only if you know how to do it properly. Well, before long, my friends and family members were begging to know my secret. And when I showed them the simple generator I'd built, a lot of them had a hard time believing something so small could be creating so much energy. But after I'd given them the simple building instructions I'd come up with following Stan's designs, and they'd followed them and created their own power plant in about the time it takes to watch a football game on TV, they became believers fast. Because no matter whether the person who used this brilliant invention was hooking it up to their electric box or just powering up their garage, shed, cabin, or just having it on the side as a backup generator, the results were the same an abundance of clean, easy energy that they could use to power up anything. Pumping as much heat as they wanted during the winter, blasting the AC during the summer, running their televisions, their kitchen lights, or their garage doors for almost nothing. Soon my friends were telling their friends about my little miniature power plant, until finally the number of phone calls and emails from people asking me to share the blueprints for my home power plant became so overwhelming. My wife put her foot down and told me that I had to find a better way to share this natural energy production system with the world. So I went to work writing out the blueprints, the materials list, and a follow-along video showing the construction process in simple steps. As I said, it took me almost a year to understand Stan's design and develop a simplified way to build the system. Stan's dad did it by tryouts, so you can imagine how his plans looked. But after all the hard work, the smart solar box was born. Once you'll have the smart solar box installed in your home, you'll instantly be able to save up to 68% on electricity by tomorrow. Some people reported to even 120% by scaling it up, without spending months in trying to build 1,000 square feet of solar panels, or endangering yourself by trying to place them on the roof, and paying thousands of dollars in the process. You'll be able to take this little device anywhere with you. It's so small that it fits in your trunk, for when you go camping. One charge per battery will give you 18 to 20 hours of free electricity, works everywhere, and will charge even if it's cloudy. You'll be able to power any kind of household appliances, from lamps and toasters to AC units, with pennies on the dollar, anytime, anywhere, totally legal, without breaking the law. And even if the shit hits the fan, you'll still be able to have enough electricity for cooking and preserving your food, while others will beg for a leaf of rotten bread. This little device is very light and portable, perfect for natural disasters, and not only. There's no maintenance whatsoever. Maybe only to clean the panels once in a while and take out the dust from the boxes every six months, and there's no noise around it. Heck, it's even very easy to hide if things are going crazy and looters will be on the street. It saved our lives during that dreaded Wisconsin blizzard. Actually, Stan is visiting us frequently with his little ones. We're best of friends now. He also built a second unit a few months ago, following my simplified plans, and results started pouring in. He called me happy as a clam last month to tell me all about his microscopic power bill. More and more people are discovering the joyfulness and peace that comes with off-grid electricity. And the way I see it, you need the smart solar box almost as much as you need air. 
Energy prices are going up, the big energy fat cats are becoming even greedier, and you're left alone with bills of $100, $200, or even $350 every month, when all this time you can pay less than 20% of the energy you're consuming, or even go off-grid with a simple scaling trick. It's like every week the power companies are paying you back 68% or more of the electricity bill. Plus, why shouldn't you? Since it takes less than $200 to have your own power device ready, that's less than a month's bill most of us pay to the greedy bastards and have it up and running in under four hours when you have the complete videos that will show you how to build your own unit fast and safely. That's right, I'm about to share all the videos where I'll teach you how to build your own unit by the end of the day, even if you don't have a screwdriver in your home. There's no maintenance costs, breakdowns, clouds, bird dropping, noise, and all the things that you have to be worrying about. The Smart Solar Box is extremely adaptable and will change your life for the better. So, if you want a dumb, simple, safe device that costs less than a month's bill to build with materials that you can find anywhere, even if you're not an electrician, a silent device that you won't even hear running, that is so practical and efficient with almost zero maintenance, that will reduce your electricity bill starting today by at least 68%, now is the perfect time. We want to get this into as many homes as possible. Solar panel technology has already changed the face of the modern world, and it can do it one more time. This time in a cost-effective way right in your backyard. People need to hear about this amazing device so they can break free from big energy and stop paying for electricity that should be available to everyone. So, here's the deal. The Smart Solar Box is available in digital format as videos that you can watch and re-watch or download as many times as you like. You could be re-watching them just 5 minutes from now and you can enjoy the 68% electricity bill cut by the end of the day. I'm very serious about it. You'll save hundreds of dollars each month and thousands each year and there will be no reason to fork out at least $20,000 on a classic off-shelf solar panel system that pays for itself in eight long years. How much is it worth to you to literally save 68% on electricity bills for good? So I'm not going to ask you to invest $1,000 for this secret, even though I know it's worth at least that. It won't cost you $500. Stan's dad wouldn't have afforded that. The whole reason I'm even charging any money for this is to keep the website running for as long as possible. Yet the Smart Solar Box blueprints and video guides won't cost you $500, not even $250, though they would be worth every penny at this price. I'm going to set the price of Smart Solar Box at just $39.69. Yet, I want you to be sure that this solution is absolutely right for you and your family. That's why I won't even ask you for the $39.69 today. Heck, I won't even ask you to pay that tomorrow. If you act right now and on this page only, I'll let you have full, unrestricted access to my guide, plus unadvertised bonuses, for only $1. Read it over tonight or tomorrow morning and make absolutely sure that this solution is for you. If you love what you read, and I know you will, do nothing and you'll be billed for the remaining $38.69 in three days from now. If you decide this isn't for you, cancel the payment hassle-free at any time and we will still walk away as new friends. But the only way to secure your spot in the program is to click the Buy button now. I can't guarantee that I can keep this price for longer, especially since we're giving 60 days of unlimited email support. So don't get mad if you come here in a few days and see that the price has gone back up. And really, the price doesn't even matter. That's because you're covered by my ironclad, no questions asked money back guarantee for 60 full days. Here's how this works. Get your copy now. Try it for a full 60 days. And if for some reason you're not satisfied, you don't see that damn meter stop, or whatever reason you may have, you don't have to tell me. Just write me a few lines on your private support page, and I'll refund you even if it's the 24th hour of the 60th day. But because you're getting here early, if you act right now, I'll let you have Smart Solar Box plus a surprise bonus, plus the list of tools and supplies for only $1. And if you decide to keep it, you'll be billed for the remaining $38.69 in three days from now. That's probably less than half of what you're paying each month on electricity, and you can recoup that investment in as little as 10 days. Getting the videos and blueprints for the Smart Solar Box is easy. Just click the big, shiny, inviting Buy Now button that just appeared below, and you'll be taken to our secure order page. It's simple. Get the blueprints today and put them to the test. See how easy it is to make your own electricity with the Smart Solar Box. Watch as your power meter slows down the moment you plug your system in, and see what it's like to slash your electric bill by 50%, 60% or more by the end of the month. You have 60 days to decide whether this was a good investment or not. And if you're less than thrilled with how much you're saving on electricity, as I said, just write us a short email at the address you'll find in the members area. I'll give you an immediate refund, no questions asked. And just imagine how your life will be just two months after making the Smart Solar Box. And better yet, if you scaled it right, 
That power bill I told you about earlier, with the negative balance, it's finally here. Because you found a way to reduce it by 68% or more, overnight, every month, for the rest of your life, just from keeping the smart solar box on. And month after month, you get the same relaxed feeling that comes with not owing anyone a red cent. You're finally free and independent, no longer trapped inside a legal monopoly that's holding you at gunpoint. The Smart Solar Box is about something bigger and more important than money. It's about regaining your freedom and making a stand. Right now, you're at a crossroads that's going to affect not just your bank account, but your happiness, your security, and safety of your family for years to come. And the way I see it, three paths lie ahead of you. The first thing is to do like most people, take no action, do nothing, and hope that nothing bad will happen. Let this video end, leave this site behind, and keep feeling like you're going to have a heart attack every time you open up your electric bill. Keep acting like a power Nazi around the house, constantly worrying about every last watt of power. Keep sweating your ways through the summers and freezing your way through the winters, all because you want to save a few bucks. Keep contributing to the problem, gobbling up our natural resources and keeping us addicted to foreign sources of power. And keep dreaming that FEMA and the Gov will be there to save you when the shit hits the fan. Of course, there's a second path, and that is to take what you've learned today and try to figure out your own system for creating real power for your home. Honestly, you can try this, but would you rather reinvent the wheel every time you leave the house, or would you rather just climb into your car and get where you're going? It took me a lot of time, effort, energy, and work to put together Smart Solar Box, to test it and to make sure that even non-technical folks like my brother could follow it and use it. And it's way too easy to mess this up and spend a lot of money while you're experimenting. Buy the wrong kind of cell or batteries. Remember, you don't need new ones. Forget a particular part and you'll end up with a really fancy lawn ornament that does not generate a single watt. And if you really want to be self-sufficient and not at the mercy of big electric companies, then you should seriously consider path number three. Let me take all the risk for you. Do what over 17,341 folks have already done. Grab your copy of the Smart Solar Box. See how fun it is to start generating power for you and your family in shockingly little time. And with our generous 60-day guarantee, there's really no way you can lose. Just click the yellow Buy Now button that you see below. You'll be brought right to our secure order page, and we'll be able to grab your copy of the Smart Solar Box, all the bonuses, at a whopping discount right away. So you need to act fast if you don't want to miss out on the opportunity of a lifetime. We don't know if or when will big energy shut us down. It could happen in a month, or it could happen tomorrow. The bottom line is, you need to get in fast, while you can, to get your hands on this incredible technology. Click the Buy Now button now. There are some questions that I keep receiving from people and I'll try to answer a few here. 1. If Smart Solar Box works so well, why aren't more people using it? There are more than 17,341 happy families already using Smart Solar Box, but every serious prepper that uses it won't brag about it. For some, it's the fear factor. Most people think this is too complex to build. The fact is, Smart Solar Box is easy when you have the proper video instructions. 2. How hard will this be to make? This is so simple and easy to build, you'll kick yourself for not taking up Smart Solar Box earlier. The whole thing takes 3 hours when you do it for the first time. Record is 88 minutes. Doesn't require strength and electric school. That's all. And really, there's no excuse for not giving it a try. In fact, if you don't want to lift a finger, you can still do this. Just pay someone $50 to watch the short video and to put together the Smart Solar Box for you. It's more fun than Legos, and many of our clients are saying that their children love it. 3. How long will this take? It will take you a little over 30 minutes to watch the video, and that's it. Building the Smart Solar Box takes under 4 hours if you're slow, a lot less if someone's helping you. 4. How much do the parts cost? To build a small-scale Smart Solar Box, you'll need about $204 worth of parts, even if you want to buy everything new from the websites, that you can get from any electronics store, or you can go online for even lower. If you want to scale it up and get more electricity, you'll need more expensive parts, but you'll find that you can easily power up an entire three-story home with under $980 in total costs. How safe is your platform? ClickBank is one of the biggest merchants on the internet. Your personal data will be completely safe during the process, and it only takes two minutes to complete your personal payment details and to reach our members area page from where you can download this product. For all the problems you have, you can send us a short email at support at smartpowerforall.org. We'll be there for you anytime for any question you might have for us. Click the Buy Now button below.